Here we go for the third and final part of how to make a cover for your magazine journal. Unfortunately, I deleted, accidentally deleted the footage from this final step, but I will reenact it so that you can see how I did it. So when we left last time, we just had the guy on here. We had the washi tape and the spine. And since that time, what I've done is I found this P now, for those of you who follow my um, creative journal, you may remember the A that I had with attitude. It was the same thing, only this one was P with power. And I just put a number 23. I used these Tim Holtz rub-ons. And the 23 doesn't mean anything. I They were just happened to be together, so I used it. I put some numbers. It's these numbers right here, those rub-ons. I just put them right there along with the, the number that's right there. And uh, let's see, I had some more rub-ons, some washi tape that I stuck up there. And let's see, on the edge, what I did was I put some plain old masking tape. I wanted something on the edge, but I really didn't want anything that was going to compete with the rest of the cover. So I just put masking tape on there, which worked great. I'm going to use that again. In fact, I'm going to use it inside instead of washi tape down the center like I've done on my other journal. I'm going to use this, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Uh, let's see, what else did I add? I added a rub-on here, which again was from the Tim Holtz um, rub-ons. It was right here, but it's like this. And I really wanted to just do half of it, but unfortunately it's stuck on part of it. So I had to just go with the flow there and use it that way. And that's pretty much all that I added on the front. On the back, I added quite a bit. So the last time we had nothing except my jelly print and the spine. I've since added the mirror that uh, when I was kind of trying to decide what I was going to do on the cover, the mirror was one of those things. And also this guy. And I put the mirror on and I kept thinking it needed something else. And I cut him out and threw him down on there, and I loved it, so I went with that. I added some washi tape down here and took this paper and just ran it that way. And that's pretty much it. Now, in order to finish this, here's what I did. After I got everything down, I gave it a light sanding. And I just used my sanding block, my 180 grit sandpaper. And I only did this because I like a little bit of a distressed look. And you can see that it, it did distress him. It'll catch the high points and you never know exactly how it's going to react. It will, it will change with every cover that you do and the, the material of the paper. But I gave it a light sanding both front and back. And then... I, I wiped that down, and then I went to my Liquitex, which I've used before. You've seen, seen it on many of my videos. And this time I used the Tim Holtz Distress Collage Brush, because I really like this. And I just went over the whole thing like this. So I gave it a coat, just like you do with Mod Podge, the same kind of thing. And if you have Mod Podge, you could use that as well. Just go over it like this, a light coat, wait until it dries, don't forget to do the spine and then go over the back just like that. Very simple. Just make sure it's good and dry before you go to the next step. And that's the hard part for me because I want to get going on it. Okay. And then this is where you apply your finishing wax. And you should be, you should have pretty much everything on here that you want before you do the finishing wax. Now, I'm not saying you can't add things after. You certainly can. I've done it on my journal, my creative journal, and it's fine. Um, on this one, I added quite a number of things here, and I think the flower, this, what's inside, playing with paper, and it'll work fine. You just have to make sure you glue it down really well before, um, or even if you have the wax on it. Okay, so... Now we're gonna apply the wax. So I use this, I only use this because it's what I happen to have. You could probably use any kind of wax that you might find um, you know, around the house if you have anything. Even Daddy Vans I think would be, would be fine. And this is my wax brush. 
it's an old stenciling brush, I just go around like this and then I just rub it on like that. Just in circular motion all over. I make, I make sure I get a fairly even coat. It doesn't have to be thick, but it has to be a fairly even coat. So just like that. And I wait about five minutes to let it dry and it'll, it'll feel waxy. You won't necessarily go to a haze like wax does, but um, I just give it about five minutes. Then I take a paper towel and I just, I just wipe it off a bit just to kind of get the first layer of wax off. And then um, this is where I go to town on the buffing. So I, I have a rag that I use. It's a piece of flannel and something to wrap it around because it makes it a little bit easier to, to actually buff it. And then you just start and you buff and buff and buff. And it takes quite a while if you really want it to make sure you get all the wax off. But you just do it like that. And that's really the extent of it. Make sure you feel it and it's super slick and super smooth. And that's when you know you have your wax off. And I do it both front and back. I do it on the spine. It's a little harder on the spine. but So you just do it like that. Just go round and round and round and round and buff it till it's done. And that is how I finish my covers. And at this point, it's really done. I, I'm not going to really add anything else. I was really, I told you this was going to be an art journal for me. And I wanted it to have kind of an artsy look. And I didn't want the cover to get too precious where I was afraid to do, you know, do anything or touch it or... So I, um, I, I kind of grunged it up a bit. And I, I think I even said I wasn't going to, but I changed my mind and decided I would. So I've done one page in here. This was one of the things that I considered for the cover, if you remember. And I certainly haven't finished this page. But my plan for this book is to use jelly prints that I have. Because I have quite a number of, of prints that I've done. And so I just picked a spread in here and started. So I glued these down and then here's where I use the masking tape. And I really like how it sort of disappears and I can come in and do stamping. I could put washi tape down there if I want. I could paint it. There's a lot of things that the flexibility with the masking tape. So I'm going to see how that goes. And then on the side here I just took a piece that was from the cover and stuck it up just right on the edge because I needed a little something. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do washi tapes on the edge like I did in my creative journal or if I'm going to do something like this on each of the pages and it'll give it a sturdy edge. Um, I did add some uh, pencil work on here just to darken everything up and make it stand out a little bit. Uh, and I still have obviously more work to do on this, but I wanted to show you what it was going to look like. That's my plan for it. So I hope you've enjoyed the series. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I've got another project that I'll be sharing with you uh, in the coming weeks. I'm just finishing it up now. And then we'll have a flip of uh, October. Oh my gosh. And about a week and a half, I think, or two weeks. So uh, be looking forward to that. Thank you all for watching and commenting. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.